What's up guys, Liz with Mike G here. So I wanted to ask you guys a question. I'm thinking about possibly changing my YouTube channel name and just going with my name. So what do you think of that? Put it down in the comments below. Secondly, I wanna to talk to you about the real estate market and all the hype surrounding a possible crash and all these things that are supposedly gonna happen. I'm not so sure. I'd like to know what you think, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and some of the factors that I think are gonna affect the real estate market going into 2021 and what we could possibly see play out in terms of either it's gonna be a crash or a slight correction in the downward fashion or maybe a slight recession. Real quick before we get started guys, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and click that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it and it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So let's get started today, all right? So without further ado, let's get into the video. A lot of people are talking about, you know, the housing market crash and they were predicting five, six months ago and when COVID was, you know, still kind of new that things were gonna crash. That hasn't happened yet. In fact, if anything, the market has completely gone ballistic, been on fire, doing better than it's ever been. And there's a couple variables that are fueling that growth that I want to get into. So first off, let's talk number one about interest rates. Interest rates are at historical lows right now. And they have been uh, because the Fed did that to spur the economy to prevent a crash at the beginning of the pandemic. And that has really fueled a lot of investors who have purchased homes and just regular people who are buying. And that's really helped stabilize things. But there's a couple more variables as well. Another thing, guys, is mortgage forbearance. Now, mortgage forbearance, uh, those mortgages are now, those, those expire in March of 2021. So what does that mean? Well, that means that those people that don't do that, those banks are going to end up taking those homes back. Now, I don't know if the banks are going to release all the inventory like they did back in 2008, 2009, but we'll see. That's yet to be uh, determined. But that could bring a lot more inventory to market as well, which would also drop the price. Another possible thing that's feeling the real estate boom that hasn't slowed down is, is migration trends. People are moving in different parts of the country because they don't have to commute to work anymore. As the workforce changes and gets accustomed to a virtual world, people don't have to work at an office anymore so now they're not bound geographically. They can move anywhere they want. And you're seeing that. And also people are wanting a home that they can work out of and live in. So their home needs are changing. Let's talk about something that could affect that change. And let's talk about mortgage delinquencies. Right now, there's a massive amount of people that are delinquent on their mortgage. What, this, what does this mean? Well, this means that either because of the mortgage forbearance, which ends in March, uh, you're having a lot of people that could lose their home due to employment issues because of the pandemic. So what that means is that there could be an adverse effect on the supply and a lot of inventory could come to market in the next several months, which would change the price. Another reason why the housing market crash I don't think is gonna come is because there's so much demand for little supply right now. Now, going into 2021, that could change. But for right now, the reason why we haven't seen this so-called crash that everybody's talking about is because the demand has not stopped. In fact, the demand has gotten even more for the housing supply that we have across the country nationally. Certain pockets in certain metro areas, there are, yes, variances and, and things are different. But in general, for the United States, the demand has not ended and the supply is very, very small. Look, there's no doubt in my mind that inventory will be affected by all of these things. And that is going to happen in 2021, you will start to see some changes happening. There's definitely gonna be a correction, but that's why I'm sleeping on the crash. I don't really believe the hype that everyone's panicking just because there's a supposed health pandemic that, that it's going to affect and crash everything else. The main reason I'm not worried about this market crash and why I am supposedly sleeping on all the hype is because look at this right here. So this is an indicating uh, indicator that shows pending contracts are 20% up than they were this time last year. Mortgage purchase applications are up 27%. Lockbox openings keep that are kept track by the National Association of Realtors are up 21%. Buyer traffic is up 32%. And we don't even need to get into mortgage rates because those numbers are absolutely crushing the numbers of last year and prior years. So these are really strong growth indicators going into 2021 that the market is not going to crash and prices will probably stay the same for quite some time. It seems a lot of people think it's a great time to sell a home and that's 
because of high home prices and because of favorable mortgage rates. But then there's also people that think it's a great time to buy a home and 51% of them feel that it's a great time to buy because of favorable mortgage rates. So that seems to be a huge factor that's driving this home surge. This chart from the National Association of Realtors here, you can see over the last 10 years, this is a, uh, the lowest supply of inventory that we have right now since going back to January of 2010. Uh, this is by months. So there's literally just slightly over two months worth of inventory, and this is on a national average. So that's extremely low. So that makes it a very strong seller's market. Tons of demand with little supply. Lastly, guys, I want to talk to you about the one real estate niche that I think is going to be the strongest best bet for your investment going forward in the 2021 and beyond. And that would be mobile home parks. Why would you say mobile home parks? But mobile home parks, Mike, isn't that where like low income people live and it's just full of like pickup trucks and, and muddy roads and, and people wearing tank tops that drink beer all day and don't work? Well, you'd be surprised, to be honest with you. Mobile home parks are what I think the best investment, and a lot of other people do too. I'm not alone with this. So thanks for tuning in to List with Mike G, guys. Again, smash that subscribe button and obliterate that like button for me. I really appreciate that. I'm going to try to grow this channel and keep bringing you guys awesome content so you can make money. Thanks so much. Peace.